While the world dreams about getting to Mars, China is targeting the moon for exploration. This means that the moon could soon be a source of conflict between Earth's superpowers because of possible future questions regarding who controls the mining rights to different parts of the moon. China's space administration, the CNSA, currently has a rover exploring the far side of the moon as part of its Chang'e 4 mission. It is also preparing to launch the Chang'e 5 mission this year to collect lunar samples and bring the samples back to Earth. The nation plans to add to its impressive list of lunar projects with a new set of missions to explore the moon's south pole. Chang'e 6, a backup mission for this year's sample return launch, is scheduled to head to the moon in 2023 or 2024. Chang'e 7 is scheduled to launch around 2024 with the dual aims of landing on the south pole of the moon and closely studying the region from orbit. The Chang'e 7 mission will be quite a complex mission featuring five different spacecraft. These five spacecraft would weigh 8.2 tons and would be thrusted into space by a Long March 5 rocket. The five spacecraft would be a mini flying craft, a surface rover, a lander, a relay satellite, and an orbiter. The orbiter would scan the south pole of the moon from orbit using sensitive measuring equipment. The lander and the rover would also feature such equipment. The mini flying craft would carry a water molecule analyzer to take measurements in permanently shadowed areas at the lunar south pole. Following this Chang'e 7 mission, the Chang'e 8 mission would be another lunar south pole landing mission planned for the late 2020s. That mission would include test technology for using local resources to manufacture objects by using 3D printers, according to Chinese press statements. Scientists found new clues about when the moon's internal dynamo stopped generating the lunar magnetic field. Billions of years ago, the ancient moon had a powerful dynamo at its core that produced a strong global magnetic field. Scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology say that they have pinned down when that dynamo stopped, leading to the field's dissipation. In a study published in Science Advances, researchers say that the Apollo mission collected lunar rocks that preserve a record of the moon's ancient magnetic field. However, most of these rocks dated to between 3 and 4 billion years or too long ago for studying the end of the moon's internal dynamo. To research the moon's later magnetic history, the scientists tested two samples that were 1 billion years old and found them to record a weak lunar magnetic field. As the rocks were left by a meteor impact, scientists reheated the rocks and obtained the same readings to make sure the impact's heat did not interfere with the rocks' magnetic records. According to the MIT News release, the moon used to be much closer to Earth and the gravitational effect caused the liquid lunar core to wobble, which created the magnetic field. The weak magnetism recorded by the two rocks suggests the gravitational effects had begun to seize up one billion years ago. Scientists may have finally solved the mystery of the tiger stripes on Saturn's moon Enceladus. According to a study published in Nature Astronomy, the Cassini probe first detected the four strange fractures on the moon's north pole when the spacecraft orbited around Saturn 15 years ago. According to the researchers, the tiger stripes are about 130 kilometers long, with fracture lines running parallel to one another spaced at 35 kilometers apart. Lead author Doug Hemingway at the Carnegie Institute for Science says that the fissures constantly blow out water and ice, unlike any other formation known to exist on icy moons. According to the research team, the tiger stripes and the formation's strange behavior is caused by the moon's eccentric orbit around Saturn. Because Enceladus's distance to Saturn fluctuates, planetary gravity stretches and flexes the moon. This effect generates the heat that keeps Enceladus from freezing solid. The gravitational force is so powerful that it changes the shape of the moon, with the resulting stress creating the first tiger stripe on Enceladus. As the moon's surface ocean erupts through the fissure, the jets of water then freeze and fall back on the moon. The weight of the accumulated ice and snow puts pressure on the nearby ice sheet and breaks the crust on parallel lines. Those fractures become the moon's stripes. Scientists had previously thought that Pluto started out as a ball of rock and ice. The ocean beneath its surface formed as heat from the dwarf planet's radioactive core melted the ice. But some scientists think Pluto started out as a hot world. Here is what you need to know. 
New research suggests Pluto started out with a subsurface ocean that has been slowly freezing over time. The findings are based on an analysis of pictures of Pluto's surface taken by NASA's New Horizons mission. These show extensive ridges and troughs consistent with the planet expanding as its ocean froze. Pluto is thought to possess a liquid ocean beneath a thin icy surface and a mantle of watery ice, according to the paper which was published in the journal Nature Geoscience. The study suggests the heat energy that allowed for a liquid ocean came from rocks colliding with and raining down on Pluto as the planet formed. Heat may also have been generated by radioactive elements in the rocks. The research suggests other big Kuiper Belt objects, the largest of which are Pluto, Eric, Haumea and Makemake, may also have once held liquid oceans on their surfaces. Why is this important? It means that Pluto may be more capable of supporting alien life than we had previously thought. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.